Hey, Robot Makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So, do you want to join me as we unbox the new Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig desktop kit? Uh, I picked this up at the Raspberry Pi store in Cambridge myself in the UK, um, and I'm looking forward to sort of unboxing it. I've kept it here just for you guys. So, does that sound cool? Let's dive straight in. So, my name's Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code, and have a whole load of fun along the way. This is one of the fun ones, I guess. Um, so, let's get over to it, shall we? Um, so, I've got it over here on the, uh, the desk, and I can't wait to, to sort of get stuck in. I've got a couple of other alternative camera angles as well. So let me, uh, let me show you that. So we've got the uh, the alternative cam there and we have the, uh, where's the studio camera gone? Why is that one not showing up there? We have, we have this shot as well. Hey, everybody can see my messy, uh, <laughs> my messy den. Right, let's get over here. So the first thing to know about this is it's a pretty big box actually. I'm going to get over to that camera there that we can see a bit better. So you can see it's pretty chunky. It reminds me very much of when the uh, when I got uh, the, the ZX Spectrum in the uh, the 80s, 1982, Christmas 1982, 1983, I think it was. This sort of slides off here. And we've got this nice sort of uh, tubular container there. It's got the, uh, the 8 gig thing on there. So let's just go back over to the overhead. You can probably see a bit better there. So 8 gig. It's got the nicer. I met the people who do the design of all this stuff. Um on Monday last week that was really cool so you got all these nice little uh, icons there so it's got the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, Model B inside it has a USB keyboard and hub it's got the USB mouse an SD card a USB-C power supply micro HDMI cable which are essential and the, a case and a book as well so let's check out what this looks like inside so here we go I've also got a little screen here as well um, which is going to help me sort of set this up if I just go to that one there little uh, HDMI screen this, this is going to help me connect it up just enough to get um, get the power connected get the uh, the operating system booted and then we could probably switch over to something like VNC to do some uh, things like installing Portainer of course so well, let's get back over to the overhead let's unbox this this thing okay so all nice and white it's very uh very Apple-esque in its whiteness there. So we've got the little USB-C power supply. Um, so you can use like mobile phone chargers, but the thing with these Raspberry Pi 4s is they're actually quite power hungry. I don't know if you can see that. It says it's a three amp at 5.1 volts. So that's quite a power hungry beast. It can do 15.3 watts of power. So um, we're gonna be plugging that in shortly. We've got the nice official case. And this, uh, this case has actually got the Raspberry Pi 4 already installed. So that's uh, what the Raspberry Pi 4 looks like inside. You've got the header pins, the two HDMI, the USB power. You've got the uh, display adapter and the camera adapter. You've also got an audio connector and you've got two lots of USB. You've obviously got the USB 3, USB 2 and a network connection as well. Uh, now, I am a little bit concerned that we haven't got any kind of cooling in here, uh, but what I'm probably going to do with this is, uh, is take it out and put it into um, one of the... The clusters that I'm running in the background. I'll, I'll take you on a little tour of that when uh, we come to do that. We've also got the, uh, the official Raspberry Pi mouse. It looks really nice there. We'll, uh, we'll get that out in a second as well. And of course we have the Raspberry Pi memory card so, to put on there. We've got some little feet. This is for the case. So you put these little feet into the, uh, to the case if you, you want to use it on there. And that's the, the hole there for the, the SD card as well as a little lights to indicate what's going on so that's the first layer we've also got a little booklet and a quick quick start guide there as well i guess let's put this over here and we've got a couple of cables so i did wonder why they went for these really really small um hdmi cables because they're not very practical they if you if you buy the cheaper cables these things snap off and it's like a lot of pressure going into the uh, you know to the connector on the on the US on the motherboard, uh, and then you've got the great big connector on the other side. So we'll definitely be using that in a second. Just going to take that tag off so that we can plug it in. And we have we've got a secondary one. So we've got one for each of the HDMI monitors. I've only got I have actually got two monitors here. I've got a secondary one just above, but we'll probably only be using one. And oh, there's the book as well, which is. The beginner's guide to the Raspberry Pi, which is updated for the Pi 400. So let's just move this out of the way. Oops. So what I guess we'll do, we'll get the keyboard out so that we can get this up and running. So first of all, I just need something to cut things with. So I'm just going to grab some uh, wire cutters here just to give us a bit of a cut. 
so <laughs> so Richard says the smell of new toys I'll put some of your comments on in a second I'll not just do uh, this entirely and we can see what people are talking about there but I can see all your comments there at the side so we've got the uh, comes in lots of packaging I'm not sure what this is for if it's just anti-static bag but a bit of waste as far as I'm concerned there we go let's just move that it's a nice box again I do like the uh, the artwork on here it's very nice yeah Steve said he's not keen on that micro HDMI the uh, the mini would have been much better yeah I don't know why they went with that I, I thought the uh, I even thought the mini was a compromise on the zero let's go throw that over there so there we go that's the uh, the official keyboard so we've got three USB connectors on there and the little connector in there as well I love the color scheme on this as well so you can everything sort of matches nicely and this cable this cable isn't too long it's just long enough to connect up what you need so that goes into into that and this is going to go into the into any of the USBs I'll leave the, the USB 3's there just in case we need them for something else like that uh, we'll open up the mouse next I do like these mice I tend to use these I, I have a, a Surface Pro 4 Microsoft Surface Pro 4 and the keyboard went on this a while ago um, we must have had it about a year no we must have had it about three years just out of warranty and um, they released some kind of firmware update and just bricked the keyboard I even bought a new a new keyboard there's one of those expensive ones that fits on the case as like um, a cover and um, yes yeah, so that doesn't work so I tend to use the the official Raspberry Pi keyboard and mouse combo uh, to do anything on that particular computer honestly it's just junk now that one uh, there we go and we've got the uh, little memory card there so it's in this nice little case and it's quite useful I do have a memory card reader that's this size so uh, that's quite useful but inside there's this tiny little micro SD card if I can just pull it out and that's a it's a sand disk so it's quite a good quality one let me just show you that a bit closer so it's a sand disk 16 gig card and it's a class 10 as you'd expect let's put this uh, into the flip that over pull it into the Raspberry Pi it just pushes in like so you do have to watch that if you if you try and prize the Raspberry Pi open if you take this case off and try and push this out now you'll probably end up snapping the connector ask me how I know that so I just need to be careful with that so we've got that there then we've got the, uh, the power supply so let's, let's get this thing out I've got quite a few of these power supplies as you can imagine so I'm going to do a poll on the, um, I'll just take a pause there for a second. I'm going to do a poll on the uh, the live chat. Get in focus, focus, focus. There we go. <laughs> so let's do a poll over here and uh, let's see uh, how many pies people have. So how do I do this? Click on that. Start a poll. Start a poll. And ask a question. How many raspberry pies do you have? Um, so let's do none let's do so what I'm doing at the moment I don't know if you can see this I'm just creating like a little poll just over here um, so I'm just uh, just doing that so if I say none 1 to 10 let's add another option 10 to what should we say 10 to 20 is that crazy <laughs> More than 20. I'll tell you how many I have in a second. There we go. Cool. Let's get back to, uh, to unboxing this. So I can see a couple of people have already uh, said how many they've got. Let's just bring that on screen. Uh, so. So old dude says he has eight. He has four Raspberry Pi 4s and four Raspberry Pi Zeros. Awesome. Uh, Cassiopeia has five. Steve has five. <laughs> so go on, have a guess how many pies you think I have. I'll take you a tour around the room in a minute and show you a couple of them are in action. Uh, and I'll also tell you the other ones that you probably can't see because they're embedded in various different things. Right, so we just need to get this power supply plugged in. So I've got a little power thing next to me I can plug this into. 
So what do you guys think about these British plugs? Have you ever seen these? Uh, we call them a plug. What would you call it? A power adapter, power connector. They have these three prongs on them and they've got these little white bits there and they, they're designed for safety. So this is the ground pin. And the idea there is that that can actually, if your computer, if your device requires grounding, you've got um, a cable that connects to the ground outside and then you've got like your usual plus and minus. And this means that they can't be in the wrong orientation as well. So uh, unlike like a US plug, you can plug these in just one way. And the other thing is these little white bits here, when you're, if you grab hold of this plug like this and you try and put it into a British plug socket, um, the, the, the things won't let you push in until you've got your hand behind it and only when they've pushed into the connector so far and you couldn't possibly have your hands touching the terminals uh, will it actually produce power so they're like designed for utter safety right let me just plug this in right so that's going to go in there so then we are going to have this connector so i should have done that before i applied power actually so I'm going to connect it first of all just to this little screen that's in front of me. Uh, I'll try and get that so you can see it on camera. But um, let's just do that. And let's see if everything is as it should be. All right, so we've got power. We've got the little flicky thing there. The the, the LED light is flashing away, which indicates to me that. Uh, it's powering up. I just need to select the right input. This this little screen has so many different inputs on it. Right, there we go. I can see it's uh, just going to connect up now. It probably does boot a couple of... It flashes the screen a couple of times. There we go. I can see there's a tiny little cursor just up there flashing. And we've got the keyboard. And we've got the mouse ready to go as well. Cool. Might just move that book out of the way. Cool, cool. Put that back on there now. Okay. Now I have also got a network connector. Let me just find that. Uh, where's the spare? There we go. So I've got a hardwired uh, Ethernet connector as well, just so I don't have to connect up to the Wi Fi. It's a bit more reliable, a bit quicker. Right, so it says before you start, we need to do a few things. So I need to set up all the locations and so on. So you've probably seen this before. It just asks you for your country, your language and your time zone. It says Belfast there. We've got Guernsey, Isle of Man, Jersey, London. I'll go for that. And then I need to set up a username and password. So what I will do, I'm just going to go off screen for a second. Um, let's go for... Duh, duh, duh will be a good idea go for me just here for a second just while I type in username and password uh, actually let's do that instead it's got a nice noise when you uh, hit the wrong key there we go right we can get back over to the overhead now uh, let's see what other people are just uh, saying on the chat there so I'm not Chuck says he has two big pies, one zero and 13 picos. Wow, that's a lot of picos. What's Richard say? American plugs sag? Sag? Uh, <laughs> hurts when you stand on them though. That's, that's very true. If you stand on a British plug, it really does hurt a lot. <laughs> so if you've got more than two pies, fours, and you want to scream and call you rude names. <laughs> really? Um, so... What do you pay for the kit? Good question. Um, so I bought this from the Raspberry Focus. <laughs> I bought this from the Raspberry Pi store um, in Cambridge in the UK, and um, in store I paid 130 for it. So it came as like a big box. I don't know if you saw the, uh, I've thrown it over there now. It came as like a big box set. So it's called the desktop kit, and this is the eight gig version. So the um, it has the as much RAM as you can get on a Raspberry Pi. So 130 pounds UK. So it's, it's probably about. What's the exchange rate to the U the US at the moment is about 182. So whatever that is. <laughs> but have a look, yeah, 130. Uh, but because I walked in and 
bought it there and then. I didn't have to sort of pay any shipping or anything like that. And they have plenty of stock. So I think what they've done to prevent people doing scalping, they're selling a lot more desktop kits. Um, I think they do sell them individually and they've got a hell of a lot more stock ready for Christmas, I do believe as well, but I don't know. Um, if, you, if you can get there in person, then you're, you're golden. Okay, so let me just finish off this. So it says setup screen. Um, on some monitors, there is a large screen cuts off. No, it's fine. That looks perfect. Um, we'll skip the wireless network for now. We're not going to update the network, the software for now, and then we're going to restart. So what I'll do on the next boot is I will set up um, the VNC software. Keeps getting out of focus. There. <laughs> I'll set up the VNC software so I can connect to the desktop directly, and then we can do some things like there's a couple of things I want to do, such as installing uh, Docker. I'm a massive fan of Docker and uh, containers. And to use, um, to manage my Docker instances, I don't tend to use the command line too much. I tend to use Portainer, uh, which is a great visual software, web-based visual software. It's even bundled now part of Docker desktop um, on, the, on the Mac. Uh, I can see that Portainer comes kind of pre-installed as a, an extension. So it's, a, it's sort of supported and uh, promoted by Docker themselves as well. Right, okay, so over here on the computer now got the desktop booted up so the first thing I'm going to do is just go over to the preferences and configuration and I think we just need to tick that the VNC software is enabled and I just need to figure out what the IP address of this is as well okay so interface we want SSH we want VNC click OK sometimes you have to reboot sometimes it's fine with that right there we go so what I'll do now, I will just come over to uh, my Mac and we will get, um, so what I'm doing now is just to bring this over here. So I'm just getting my uh, VNC software so I can connect to this. So it was a uh, 201, I think. Yep, that looks like it. And what I will do, so it's me and it's some random characters. And there we go. Boom. Right, we're in our Raspberry Pi now. So pretty quick to get up and running, don't you think? Quite impressed with how easy that was to do. So what I'm going to do first of all uh, is probably get Docker installed. Now I actually have a script for doing this. Um, I use Ansible um, to do some installations and to manage some of the, um, some of the builds I do on the, the Raspberry Pi clusters. Um, but in this case, um, it's probably easier just to, to type the command directly from there. So if I just load up, let's see if we can do this. Should be quite quick on this one. It's got tons of memory. So loading up Chrome as the browser should be fine, I guess. Let's see what happens next. And when things take a little bit while to do, I will walk you around and show you some of your pies that are around the room. So let's see how the, uh, the poly is doing. So it looks like, um, what's that? 64% of the vote is currently um, 1 to 10. Cool. And we've got 1 to 20, 27%. It's quite a few people. More than 26%. Awesome. Right, let's get back to uh, VNC. There we go. Right, so if I come over to GitHub, let's go to github.com slash Kevin McAleer slash clustered pi. Let's see if that works. I can't if it's cluster dash pi or cluster pi. There we go. And this is this is what I use to build all the the websites such as kevsrobots.com and the clustered pi, which is a whole bunch of Raspberry Pis, uh, which is sat behind me. And in here, I've got all these Ansible playbooks that I've written. So I've got quite a few of these. I've got one down there for Potena, and I've also got one up here for Docker. And what I'll probably do, rather than running it, I'll just copy the main. The main command, which is um, first of all that one there, so let's grab that and then let's just run that in a terminal and see if that works okay. So, how do we paste that? So, if you need to sort of go back to the very beginning of the uh, the command line it can be really annoying if you have to sort of keep back keying you can just do control and a and it will go right to the very beginning of the line i learned that recently <laughs> lifesaver there we go right so it's grabbed the get docker so we now look on our file system we've got this get docker let's have a look what's in there get docker does it look legit it should be fine that one so we'll run that one now so we can just do 
get docker like that. Get underscore docker, is it? Uh, we might need to just um, give it like a an execute permission. So get docker. So now if we do that, yes, it's now green, so we can run it. So if I do get docker, that should work fine. There we go. And there is a couple of extra things we need to do um, to make this work on um, a Raspberry Pi kind of seamlessly boot at, um, boot at startup and, and so on. Uh, and I shall wait for it to do all those bits and pieces. All these extra commands I've got down here kind of just sort all those things out. Uh, it doesn't usually take very long to install Docker. Um, but uh, what I will do is trying to figure out how long that's going to take. I'm just going to have a look through what other comments people have been saying that. Let's bring some up on screen. Uh, so let's scroll back to the top there. <laughs> so Dan says, it's Pi time. <laughs> Absolutely. I love Raspberry Pis. I don't know if I've mentioned this before. So as you may or may not know, I went. I was invited to uh, to meet Roby, Roby, Toby Roberts in uh, Raspberry Pi headquarters down in Cambridge in the UK. So this was like me visiting... <laughs> visiting heaven being in the actual room uh, where everybody's making it happen so i could see um, eben and uh, met liz as well and uh, met all the team that work there alan uh, sorry alistair allen who is uh, one of the chief documentation people there he's responsible for the amazing documentation they have on the raspberry pi um, i met one of the uh, software engineers who uh, does all the github stuff for raspberry pi he manages all their code obviously they met toby who's uh, an amazing maker and uh, we basically just spent like eight hours on a, what did they describe it as? A play date. Best day ever. <laughs> so highly recommend that. So what I'm going to do, I'm, oh, there we go. It's just finished. I was just thinking, do I need to do anything else on that one? Let's uh, let's just move that window out of the way a little bit and see what else we need to do. So I've got these other commands that help um, just set the thing up. So what I'm going to do is just run this user mod. So this will add the, uh, the Docker command to... So the Docker user to the, it will add the Pi user to the group that uh, Docker uses. That's what I'm trying to say. So let's paste that in there. Well, let's just get rid of all those bits we don't need there. Uh, so Pi does not exist. Ah, it's because it's Kev, isn't it? And we'll just need to use sudo as well. Super do. And then let's do the next bit. So we need to do sudo system control uh, unmask docker. Then we need to change um, the permissions on var run docker. This will help portainer run in a minute. Docker.sock. Uh, let's just sudo that as well. And then we need to install the docker compose. So let's do pip install docker let's do pip3 so pip is like the python installer like package manager um, and com and docker compose is a python script let's see if that will work cool so yeah adam says it looks like the same size box as the commodore 64 mini i have next to me oh, awesome <laughs> the smell of new toys so Rowan asks, where did I get it? So I got this from the Raspberry Pi store, uh, which is in London, in not London, Cambridge. And um, it's, there's a place called the Grand Arcade. What's really funny is there's an Apple shop and directly above this, figuratively and literally, is the Raspberry Pi store. So you can't miss it. They've got the, uh, the logo and everything on there. Uh, okay, so we've done that. And then we need to start it. So we need to, oh no, it's failed. What's, what's failed there? Do, 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 do. What have I done wrong there? So, did I need to install anything else on there? Yeah, there's a bunch of prerequisites. So let's just do um, sudo apt install lib, lib, and then ffi dev, lib ssl dev, python3, and then python3 pip. If they're already installed, it kind of just skips over them. So you can see there it says it's already been installed. Otherwise, you can just say, yes, just install that. And away it goes. Right, let's try that um, docker bit again. Half the time, it's just like downloading the packages and installing. It's usually reasonably quick. 
So let's see how that goes. Let's see what people have been talking about on here. So yeah, Rich says, I guess it's all about size. Two full HDMI ports would take up a lot of space. Yeah, it definitely would do. Um, Steve says, I'm not keen on that micro HDMI mini would have been much better. Uh, Adam says, yeah, Amazon one will become available. Um, I live in the UK and haven't seen them on sale for ages. All right, so we're having a few problems with that. What I'm going to do is basically just give that a restart. Um, it's not usually very, doesn't take a long time to restart. We can just see it there. Just went to the, the logo and it'll have the desktop up before we know it. So it's really quick to install. So let's wait for that to, uh, to do its thing. See the little flashy cursor up there. There we go. We've got the welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop thing. And then we'll have the the desktop appear. So if I go back over to here. So this will automatically just connect once the uh, VNC service starts up. And it's usually pretty quick. So I can see the desktop's now loaded. VNC will connect. As long as it hasn't got a new IP address, of course. But um, it usually, there we go. Boom, we're in. Right. Let's just go back and uh, just do that pip3. Um, install docker compose and see if that works and then there was a, there was one last command wasn't there which was to do with um, system control getting docker to start automatically I think it was so if we just do that again um, so let's go for github it's remembered where I was which is cool let's see if this is going to work And let's just scroll down to that uh, Ansible playbook. Ansible is also written in, also written in Python, which is cool. Uh, let's go for the install Docker one, which is just called Docker CE. And let's see if there's anything else I need to do. Yes, yeah, so I just need to start Docker and then reboot it. So there was a reboot in there anyway. Yeah, so it's failing on that bcrypt. That's a bit of a, a pain. If I do docker compose, is that working at all? No. Um, let's try sudo apt install docker compose. See if that works. If not, I'll troubleshoot that one in a minute. It seems to be okay. It's got something to install there as a package. That'll do. Now let's have a see what else people are talking about in the chat. So yeah, there has been um, uh, an absolute lack of um, availability of Raspberry Pis in perception of, of the public most people can't find them if you're really on it and you look every every day and, and you get to know when the Raspberry Pis are delivered to the suppliers which day of the week it's like a Wednesday or Thursday depends on your supplier you can be lucky they don't always get uh, listed on um, RPI locator but that is a very good source as well of them and if you look for kits kits don't tend to be listed on RPI locator uh, you do pay a little bit more, but if you're buying a Raspberry Pi and you need to get like, you know, the mouse and the, you know, the power supply, you're not going to pay any more for that. If you like, you, you would buy those things anyway, particularly the power supply. You'll need to get a decent power supply anyway. So, um, you know, look at getting a kit potentially. That's one way around it. You could always buy the stuff from the kit and then sell that on eBay if that was what you needed to do. Right. So there we go. We've got um, Docker Compose install. Let's just give that a quick see if that works. Um, cool. And then what we then need to do is sudo system control system ctl. Oops. And then we do need to do start and docker. I think it's dash docker c, is it? Uh, no, just docker. There we go. Uh, let's do, let's do sudo system control start docker because the process exited with error code uh, so let's just try it might have already started up to be fair so if I do docker ps I know it's not running so let's just try that again system control start docker job failed because the control process exit with a problem so let me just have a quick look at what we've not done so we've added the user um, da, 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 da. The only thing we didn't do was remove that Python config parser thing. Um, that's fine though. And what I will do is I'll probably just give it another reboot. 
Well, that wouldn't really restart Docker, would it? I'll do it anyway. Um, can we just start it? So let's do sudo system control ctl start docker. So what did I do wrong last time? Those lines look exactly the same to me. Maybe it was just it was just having a moment. Right, so if I do docker ps now, yep, we can see that it's uh, it's ready to run. So let's go back one on here. And I'm going to grab my script for installing Portainer, which is just a single line, to be honest. It's very, very easy to install Portainer. So this little script I've got basically just stops it, removes it, and then installs it. So this is what we have as the command line. Uh, and that says 2.13.1. What I will do is probably just get rid of that last bit of the line and just let it install the latest version. So we got all the nice new features. It had quite a nice uh, look and feel update recently, didn't it? Right, let's uh, paste that in. And that looks good. So I'll tell you about all these different things that are going on here. So we've said Docker run, that's going to run a new container based on a, an image that it's going to download. I, T and D. So it's an interactive terminal and we're going to disconnect from that. We're going to run it headlessly. We're going to name the container Portainer. We're going to open up some ports, so dash P, 8,000 um, to 8,000 means we're going to punch a hole through our sort of virtual firewall in Docker uh, and expose the internal 8,000 port to the external 8,000 port. We're going to do the same with 9443, 9443, which is usually the, the port you connect to uh, Portainer from. And then we've got this uh, dash V, which is like connect the volume, so connect, bind the local mount point for var run docker sock to var run docker sock internally and that allows the portainer instance to actually interact with the host that it's running on uh, which is pretty cool um, so now if i go to um, the ip address so i can actually come out of this let me just go to go to me for a second and i'll just get a web thing open so it was 201 wasn't it and 9443 let me just go over to here and then we just need to do HTTP. Now, because it's running locally and it hasn't got like a certificate, it always comes up with this, but you basically just click the advanced button and then proceed and then you get to Portainer. So I just need to set up um, uh, a new password. Let's just do this. And boom, here we are. So I'm just going to click on the home because we've already got this local um, thing connected. And we can see that we've got one container up and running, which is Portainer itself. So this is Portainer. We've got this dashboard. We can see all the different stacks, images, um, volumes, and so on. So I'm going to download a stack, and we're going to get this up and running. So one of the other things we have over on, um, if we go back to the Raspberry Pi for a second, if I jump back one here, so as well as all these um, playbooks, I've also got some stacks as well. So if I go into here, and a stack is like a, a suite of containers and all the configuration that you need to get those up and running. So I've got a couple of them here. So if I go to the Kev's robot one, for example, um, I've got a Docker Compose file and a Docker file, and I've got an Nginx configuration file that it copies over. So if I look in that Docker Compose file, so this is like a little YAML file, and it basically just says build an app that's called my app. Here's some environment variables always build it and then expose it on port 3333, 3333. So on my network here, if I just type in 192.168.1.3 and then I run it, if I put open port 33333, you'll actually get the, one of the live instances, the production servers running kevsrobots.com. There's actually four servers running this. So we have uh, another one there. So it looks exactly the same. So there's four Raspberry Pi 4s all running this website. And one of them, I think it's probably this one here. This one actually runs an extra thing, which is uh, Nginx uh, load balancer. So if I go 9443 on there, I can connect to the uh, the Potato instance if that was running on that one. Let's see if there's uh, one running on three. Uh, and then I need to just do that HTTP bit in front of it. Like so. And then we can see what's running on that particular node cluster thing. So here we go. Now I did set up, um, 
can't remember if it's admin on these or something else. Oh, is it is it me? Is it root? I can't remember what I set these up as now. Dope. Whatever. I'll come back to that one. Um so what was I saying about that? So what I'm going to do is download on this Raspberry Pi that we've just set up. Um, I'm just going to go, have I got git install? Yes, we have. So git clone https www.github.com github.com slash Kevin McAleer slash clustered pi like so and what that will do is it grab all those files all that them stack files that are most important for me and then we can i can show you how we can build this when, when it's building it does take about three or four minutes so while it does that i shall show you a couple of the raspberry pies i've got around the room right now um, so if i now go to clustered pie um, i go into stacks and i go into let's go into kev's robots just thinking if there's a quicker one let's go to kev robots and we've got these um, docker files we just had a look at that docker file that the compose file the docker file is similar it's a bit like an ansible script but it's in docker's own language and you basically got these you know clone the file download so i've got um i've got quite a few steps to building my website one of them is to grab all the latest videos off youtube from my channel and grab all the thumbnail images or the links to them and then build a yaml file that we can then use jekyll which is like a markdown to html converter to build the entire site so we use jekyll to build um, kevsrobots.com so this is what this thing here does jekyll build uh, and then we we then use nginx to actually host the files because they're just static html files and then we just got a couple of units commands just to change some permissions and whatnot so if i want to actually build that all i need to do is say docker compose and then build and it will go away and it'll grab all the different files now it's not it's complaining there so um the file in version docker blah, blah, is unsupported so what version is this because i'm using a weird version of python or something no we're on 9.3 that's fine so it's not that one goodness nothing ever works simply does it when you want it to so let's try that again no cache So what can I do instead? Let's try coming out of that one. Let's go into the beta one instead. So this is the beta site that I've just been working on, which has got all the new tutorials in. Let's try building that one. See if that's any works any better. If not, it's probably to do with the the version of Docker Compose which we just installed, which we had a problem with. So let's try the pip thing again. Let's pip install Docker Compose. Because I install it through the package manager, that's probably like a really old version, I suspect. Um, already been satisfied. That's well. If we say remove and then install it, will that fix it up? It was a dependency that it was complaining about, so let's just try that. If this doesn't work, we can forcibly install it again. So if we do. Um, it dash F. Let's see if that is. If it's not dash F, I think you can do upgrade. So if I do dash dash upgrade, let's try that. Right, so it says it's already satisfied, but it is just having another go at doing it. Let's see if this actually works. Yeah, it was that bcrypt thing it was complaining about before. Cool. Um, so, so while that's doing that, let me get my camera ready. I've got my mobile phone. I can connect. This is like a new feature of um, um, Ventura on on macOS. You can use your your phone. Yeah, it's complained again about that. You can use your phone as um, a secondary camera. So if I go over here, um, the only thing is it doesn't do the audio, so you'll not really be able to hear me very well. But I'll I'll shout, <laughs> and hopefully that'll be loud enough. So let me just get the. Uh, 
the correct scene with the phone. So there we go, Kev's phone. So if I do this, you should get like a, that's not the view I'm looking for. It is that one there, right. Okay, so come with me as we look at some of the Raspberry Pis I've got. Right, excuse the mess because it is my work environment as well, but I've got a Raspberry Pi down there. That's some bits of filament that I need to clear up. Uh, that's a Raspberry Pi 3, 2 or 3, what is it? You can see on there. Raspberry Pi, what does it say? 2, I think that's a 2. I also have another one which is sort of on my other 3D printer just over there. Um, we have a Raspberry Pi 0 up there which is on the, uh, the little quad, Smiles Quad walking robot. Um, we have the Raspberry Pi 400 there. I run a lot of commands from that one. That's where my main sort of portainer instance is for managing a lot of these stuff. Doing the science. And that's my messy desk there. We'll ignore that, but there is the Raspberry Pi here, oops, which is the Enviro hat one. And then underneath here as well, we've got the Enviro Plus, which is actually working. It just doesn't have any uh, thing on the display there. And that's managing the, monitoring the environment. Um, now at the back there, I'm going to run over to it and show you it, but I'll just tell you what it is before I do it so you can hear me. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi Compute 4 module, and I've got it in a little 3D printed case that looks like an Atari um, 2600. Okay, I'll come back over here and tell you what's happening next. So I've got two Raspberry Pi clusters. Uh, both of these are sort of production servers. Um, there's one over there and there's one over here. I'll just zoom into this one. This one is kind of like an odds and ends, all the Raspberry Pi bits and pieces I've, I've got. This is probably where this new one is going to live. And then I'll show you the, the one that's live that's running kevsrobots.com and clusteredpi.com. And I've got various other Raspberry Pis as well. So there's one in the trial bot, which is up here. So you're playing a Kev's, Kev's Robots Bingo. I did drop something then. Uh, we've got the Pi Cade that has a Raspberry Pi 4 in it, I believe. Uh, next to the Raspberry Pi, um, or underneath the, the Pi Cade, there is another Raspberry Pi. This is a very original one. So the last couple I was just showing you there. So the yellow thing, that's a Raspberry Pi Zero. That's like another terminal thing. There is the uh, the touch one that I just showed you. I think it's upside down at the moment, that one. And then over there, there was the, the weather sensor. So that's the weather hat, which is running the weather station outside. Now I've got another Raspberry Pi over here. So this Raspberry Pi, uh, it's quite a special one because it's been signed by Eben, Upt Eben Upton, that yellow squiggle there. His Eben's signature. Uh, so when I met him in uh, the Compute um, National Museum of Computing, um, he was very kind to sort of sign that one. And this is quite an old one. If you look at the uh, the date on that, it's 2011. And he was looking at all the components on there, the polyfuses and all that, and he said this is a pre-Sony um, factory in Wales model. So it's quite an old one. I think the really, really old ones have, is it a blue audio uh, audio connector on them or composite connector so yeah that's a uh, it still works but I, I don't tend to use that one it's 
got the much larger uh, card on it as well, the full size memory card. That just lives up there for now. And right, so I've got a list of all the other um, I'm just going to turn this off now and go back to me. There we go. How did you enjoy that? The audio might have been a bit funky, but hey hey. So yeah, you've seen the trailer bot, you've seen the Pycade one. Uh, there's another couple of robots that I call the Explore robots. Um, they were just over there actually as well. They've got uh, Raspberry Pi Zeros in them. Uh, you've seen the two Octoprint printers, which are running Raspberry Pi. These the clusters, so there's four in each of them, just wherever they are. One there and one just behind that shiny sign. So that's another uh, eight Raspberry Pis. Then there is the, it's it's kind of fallen apart. I'll, I'll take a piece of it and show you. This was my Cray supercomputer um, model using Raspberry Pis. So I've got a whole bunch of Raspberry Pis. Most of them are Raspberry Pi um, 02Ws. These ones in here are not. These look like the original Raspberry Pi without the the Wi-Fi. So these are the original zeros. And it's got this little seat kind of configuration. They just sort of screw in there. One of the first sort of 3D models I actually created. So that's just living on my desk over there. But there's 12 Raspberry Pi zeros in that little model there. Currently not doing very much. Uh, then we've got the desktop Pi 400, which you've just seen. You've seen the touch Pi over there. You've seen the two terminals, the, the black one, which is just there. And then the yellow one, which is there. The Enviro Plus, which is on my desk over there. The Weather Hat, which was just over there, just connected. There's nothing on the screen. Then over here, I, I should have shown you them. There is three Raspberry Pi cameras. So just get my hand to move in the right orientation. Just there, there is three cameras. Uh, they've all got Raspberry Pis in them. I think it's a Raspberry Pi 2, a Raspberry Pi 3, and a Raspberry Pi 4 in them. Uh, there's the Quad Smas, which you saw up there. Then there's um, the, yeah, the 12 Raspberry Pi 02s, which we've just talked about, the Enviro Hat, the thermal printer. So I've got a little black thermal printer box. It's down there somewhere. Uh, that has a um, Raspberry Pi Zero in it. It has an original Raspberry Pi Zero and a little USB dongle uh, through uh, with a Wi-Fi module connected on there. So you can connect to it from your phone and you can print out, you know, whatever kind of um, document you wish on there. It's quite neat. And... The RetroPie, the Atari uh, 2600 Compute Module 4 as well, which is having a bit of a boot problem at the moment. It's really unusual that one because it has a built-in MMC storage thing. I think it has like 16 gigs of onboard storage. And um, you. it means if you want to boot from that, um, you move a little jumper on the board. And if there's any problems with it, you have to sort of move that jumper back, load through a regular S, um, SD card and fix it. And I need to sort of fix it. But it's a bit fiddly to do that so I kind of haven't done that for a while so yes that's uh, that's where we're at let me go back over to our uh, desktop and we can see if we can quickly troubleshoot this issue which is a bit of a pain really um, so first of all it's saying that I need to upgrade pip so let's just do pip install upgrade pip and I'm gonna look at your comments just in case you're telling me it's this Kevin it's this this is what you need to do so let me just check uh, the comments just while that's installing i'm just gonna have a look to see what people have been talking about um so then we're seeing that those big power supply problems still or big supply problems are still hey wayne how you doing glad uh, to join the chat and uh so oh dude was saying yeah he has eight um raspberry pis four pi fours and poor four pi zeros cassiopeia's got five steven's got five so I counted up and I have over over 50 Raspberry Pis. So the way that I know this, if I go to Thing, I've got this desktop utility, which is like a network scanning tool. It runs in the background on my Mac and it tells me if any devices are added or removed from the network, that kind of thing. And it can tell you how many devices you've got by type. So if I go to, I'm just gonna show what this looks like in a second. Let me just uh, get that up and running. So if I do it by... You can have a pie chart, which I think is quite funny. There we go, vendor. Let me just find, I'll show you what this looks like. So this is Thing, and you can see all the different types of device I've got on there. So here we go, here are all the Raspberry Pis. So I just no, name them like Node, one, two, three, four, whatever. So that's page one. There's the second page. 
So there's the RPI touch. Um, some of them show up as multiple times, which is a bit confusing. That might just be that it has a different IP address. Um, and I haven't got all those other connected at the moment, but yeah, when I looked at this and had a report pulled off, it said there was over 50 devices connected that were all different with different MAC addresses um, and not, um, not the same machine with two network connections, if you know what I mean. Cool. So let's go back to that. Um, something to see what else people have been talking about on here. So Adam says he's got one Pi 4, three Picos, one Pi 2, one Pi 3, uh, and an X mini, oh, three mini odd things. <laughs> mini old things? What are the mini old things? So Laurie has five 4Bs, three zeros, so eight in total. Steve thinks he's got more than ten. I'm reading these, I'm not putting them on the screen, am I? And, um... Yeah, Adam was saying about the, the British plugs, safest in the world. Apparently they are. <laughs> and um, what else have we got there? Uh, so Alan says he has two four, two fours, six zeros and six picos. I can show you how many picos I've got just next to me at the moment. It's an embarrassment of picos. Um, they're cheap. And I also get sent them sometimes if, um, if there's a product that needs one to work, I get one as well <laughs> to test the product out. So I'm just grabbing a few in my hand here. This is by not, uh, this is not like a bragging thing. This is just this is what I have here. <laughs> so I've got a whole bunch of them. I'll go on the overhead camera. You can see what I'm what I'm talking about. So we've got quite a few there. The uh, Wi-Fi ones. I do like these new ones. There's the original ones. I do like these ones with the header pins built on. They're a little bit different, and they've also got a different uh, debug thing. So these are the uh, Raspberry Pi H, that's called. Raspberry Pi Pico H. So it has the, the, the pins, and it's another little little jig thing, which is quite neat. There we go. And I do, of course, love the Pimroni Pico Explorer. That's one of my go-to boards, because it's got the nice screen, all the nice header pins, and the breakout connectors. And you can just show that's another um, Pico H on there as well. And you've got that little mini breadboard. And they also have that... Uh, breakout garden thing as well which is quite neat so I use these for sort of testing various different projects on absolutely love them cool let's have a see what else people are talking about um, so yeah, we've talked about that um, so Robert says um, oh yeah sorry if I miss what would you pay for the kit yeah 130 US uh, 130 UK British pounds sterling so Adam says, I've got an, I have an SSD over USB 3 on mine. It's so fast compared to booting from SSD. So yeah, I bought a whole bunch of um, um, SSD connectors because not all SSDs are the same when it comes to Raspberry Pis. There's a certain number of USB hub things that they, USB to SSD connectors that they support. They don't support all of them. And I didn't know this and I spent ages. So that little... Um, cluster that you can see over there that has an ssd connected to one of the raspberry pis in there just for some local storage um, i also have down here um, an old pc um, and it has five one terabyte ssds in there so it's very very fast they're all i think i'm running true nas on there and um, i can present that to um, to docker to potena so that um, the containers can store their data on these SSDs and I can back that up and do all the rest of it so so if that Raspberry Pi sort of gets deaded I don't lose all the data so um, Europe NDB says he's thinking of selling his Pi 400 and getting an orange Pi 800 so yes my friend Chris was talking about that wasn't he on um, on his video explaining computers um, he was saying um, he did a video on the orange Pi 800 and it looks pretty cool so yes I want to sell it I'd keep hold of it and just have more <laughs> We'll have to sell it. So Clive says that I've got nine four Pi fours, four gig, one Pi four eight gig, two Pi three, two Pi threes Bs, one Pi zero and one Pi zero W two. And Laura says she's managed on three four Bs since the supply diminished by um, being available on Adafruit waiting list. You have to be relatively quick in order to get them. So yeah, if you don't already know about um, the website let me just find a web browser and load this up I'll show you what I'm talking about so oops if I come over here 
Again, a funny crackling sound going on. So there you go. There's some cute compute module fours available um, in Germany currently from Berry Base, and they've got a whole load of them there. Uh, now there is a load of Raspberry Pis that are not necessarily listed. So if I go to, for example, my friends at PirateMonkeyRobotNinja.com. And we go for Raspberry Pi kits. Let's have a look if they've got any desktop kits available right now. They've got some nice mugs though. Right, let's go to, let's just type in desktop kit. Let's see what we've got available there. Da, 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 da. No, it should come up first really, shouldn't it? Raspberry Pi desktop kit. Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit. So they're currently out of stock. Sometimes they have some in. Sometimes they have them in and they're not in the keyboard. So when I visited the factory a while ago, they had quite a few Pi 400s, but they were like a German keyboard layout or something. So let's try Pi 400. Let's get rid of the desktop kit bit. See what they've got going on there. So that one's out of stock, Spain. Out of stock, out of stock. Yeah, I guess all these ones have been grabbed up. But they do get stock, um, I think, every week. They just get sold out every week as well. But yeah, IPR, IP, rpilocator.com is where you want to sort of head. You can get things like, um, I think there's an RSS feed, there's a Twitter feed, there's a Mastodon feed. Um, so you can connect to those things and basically get alerted. There you go, the Twitter alerts that there's stock available. So if you tune yourself in there and you're quick, you can get yourself one. <laughs> cool, cool. Let's go back over to uh, the chat, see what else people are talking about on here. <laughs> Nothing compared to the pain of standing on Lego. Absolutely. That's very painful. So Clive says he has 10. Oh, cool. So he's got four Raspberry Pi 4s, 4 gig, one Pi 4, 8 gig, two Pi 3s. Uh, one Pi Zero and two, what was that one Pi Zero two W and a Pi four hundred? Oh, you didn't count your Picos. How many Picos have you got? The one Pico. I love the Picos. You can't get any, the amount of things you can do with these Picos is insane. So I've got a website running on that um, Billy Bass fish. So you can you can do all kinds of stuff with them. So it just says American plugs sag. Ah, they sag. They sort of go. Mm because they are two pins and the cable comes directly out the end. I see what you mean by sag. Yeah, it's like, um, we. Ha so there's the a weird thing, isn't it? In, in the UK, our our electric shaver, I'm demonstrating, electric shaver plugs are basically a US plug. I think they're even like 110 volts as well. Uh, they're the exact same configuration. So um, I don't know why we have that still, but yeah, if you go abroad and you've got like, like one of these great big power adapter things and then you try and plug that into the wall and it's sort of sagging it is a bit weird i don't know why i guess it's really hard to sort of change the standard once it's there so what do you call a microcontroller that drinks too much <laughs> an ad wino <laughs> i love it i love it i've got a, a, an embarrassment of a, of um arduinos as well actually I've got one just uh, my desk next to me there. I've got about 20 kits behind me. We, I bought them intending to sell them as like robot kits and then I just never got around to, to doing that because shipping would have been a pain. So I didn't do that. But um, I also discovered Punpedia, which is like a pun Wikipedia. <laughs> got to go check that out. So you got, so Rowan has got um, a 02W and a Raspberry Pi 3. But I guess it's not how many you've got, is it? It's kind of what you do with them. So I, when I first got my first Raspberry Pi, I think I built that thing in it. Um, I basically got a screen from, I think it was an Adafruit screen, and they had a project about how to build this Mac Mini thing. So I built that and I was like really proud of this and I didn't really use it. And then at some point in the future, I, I was like, you can do so much more with these things. You can run websites on them. You can make them do artificial intelligence. So there are so many things that you can use them for. So Wayne says, I'm waiting for stuff to land for my next project. So what's your next project, Wayne? Um, so Dan says, we can't see that screen so well. Yeah, unfortunately, it was a little bit uh, a little bit rubbish. That's why I went over to the VNC. I was just trying to get us plugged into that. Otherwise, you know, you're looking at that and it's a little bit grainy and it's at the wrong angle. Whereas if I uh, if I pull up the VNC thing and then we, we 
go over to that it's much easier for you to see so that's where i was aiming to get to with that we'll come back to the uh the raspberry pi in a second to see if we can do a bit more with that um so yeah thanks for the price info no problem cool cool so what am i going to use it for great question so what i am going to do with the whole situation with twitter right now uh, i'm not leaving twitter at all i i'm, I'm going to be one of those people that just hangs on until it's dead and then i shall just move um move on to the next thing and one of the next things is mastodon so it's not quite a replacement for twitter um, but it is an interesting technology and it's federated so when, when i was meeting the guys at raspberry pi last monday uh, they've just set themselves up as their own uh, mastodon instance and i was thinking well i can do the same thing now the instructions that they have on their website are how to install this directly onto the raspberry pi itself um I, I, that's okay, I can follow those instructions, but I would much prefer that to be in a Docker instance because I can then deploy that to any of these Raspberry Pis at the drop of a hat and just have the data going to something like this uh, storage uh, NAS or SAN device I've got over here. And that means that I can do that seamlessly. So I'd rather do that than sort of hard code things onto the Raspberry Pi itself. So I'm going to use Docker and it takes a little bit of fiddling about with to get that to work. So I'm going to run my own Mastodon instance on there. So I've even bought the domain name kezrobots.social ready to play with that. Um, I've also bought, <laughs> I also bought another domain name recently, which was uh, Kev's WTF. And I'm going to use it as a link shortener because I, I've, I do quite a lot of links with stuff and they end up being really long. And if you're posting a lot to Twitter, like every character uh, counts. So I thought I'd make my own Python based link uh, shortener. And that's also going to run on a Docker instance um, and be managed by Portainer as well. So Roland says he's got four. Raspberry Pi 4s for the weather station, the Pi Hall, the video surveillance, the Octoprint server, and one for the smart home. Maybe perhaps four Pi Zeros and eight Picos. Awesome. So yeah, I also run Home Assistant. Uh, that runs on the Raspberry Pi 400 on the desk there. Um, I sometimes switch that off because it is a bit of a beast. It hogs a lot of uh, resource. Uh, I also have like a Minecraft server on there that I occasionally spin up. Um, so yeah, so Richard's saying don't forget to like and subscribe. So this is a good opportunity. Thank you for the prompt there, Richard. Let me bring up um let me bring up this. And we can do a bit of a <laughs> I've not actually pre prepared any slides today, but I did uh, remember to to do that exactly. So if you're enjoying um my videos, give this one a like. Um leave a comment in the comments i mean you've all told me about your raspberry pis if you're watching this on replay i also want to know what your raspberry pi um collection is like and if you're using an alternative to a raspberry pi while the supply is what it is uh, what are you choosing to use instead so let me know that and if you've not already subscribed subscribe now it costs you nothing and it really helps out the channel i do go live every single sunday at seven o'clock uh, gmt and um, you can come and chat and hang out with us and uh, have a good time as well cool and if you're not already joined our discord server head over to kevsrobots.com slash discord and you can join the conversation at a deeper level and we sort of chat and uh, help each other out over there as well and it's a group of like-minded people and if you want to follow me on social media you can check me out at, um, on instagram at kevin McAleer. i post quite a bit of stuff on there i'm definitely all over twitter so if you go to at kevs um, kevs mac on twitter and I'm also on TikTok as well, Kevin McAleer 6 on TikTok. I've had quite a few videos sort of blow up on there, which is crazy. So the, the one I did of the, um, of this little robot, this little robot just here, I did a robot of this, uh, this work, and it's a little radar robot, or sonar robot, I should say. And that one has over 300,000 views now. It's insane. <laughs> 300,000 so i'm loving that i'm loving that so many people like robots like i do so check them out and um, if you want to help out the show as well you can do that a couple of different ways you can do a super thanks a super chat super, super chats for people watching live right now um we can make sure we've got all the super chat stuff switched on let me make sure that i have to press a little button here to make sure that appears there we go and you can also go over to kevsrobots.com slash coffee if you want to buy me a coffee and uh, we also have the youtube membership program as well so if you subscribe there's now like a join button you can click that and you can uh, get your name up in the comments so let me show you what that next bit is so supporters so yes if you want to uh, get your name over here I always get that wrong 
then you need to go over to kezrobots.com slash credits. And you, if you join any of those three things, if you buy a coffee, if you join the YouTube membership program or you uh, go to the, uh, the Buy Me A Coffee membership program, you'll get your name up in lights over here and you'll also be helping out the show as well. So thank you to all those people, including, I've got a little post-it note here, Shemi, 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 I've got that right, I hope. We've got David, we've got someone who bought me a coffee, we've got... Um, Maker Schultz, we have Frank, who bought me a coffee as well. Uh, members, we've got um, Shemi, we have Steve Phillips and Thomas Weiser. And uh, YouTube members, we have uh, Cheer Lights. So Hans, um, we're going to have him on the show at some point because uh, I just want to talk to him about that amazing project that he did, which is Cheer Lights. I do have a Cheer Light on my desk over there. We've got Michael, Frazier, Bill, um, Jose, Jeff. Wait, you've got a super chat. Thanks, Matt. That's very, wow, that's very, very generous of you. Thank you so much for that. That certainly will help uh, pave the bills this month for the, the channel. Uh, we've got Jeff, we've got uh, Johan, we have uh, John Paul, and of course, Tom as well. So thank you, everybody, who's uh, been so kind to um, support the show. And uh, yeah, that's cool. So let me just have a see what else we've got uh, in the chat going on here as well. So Rowan says, uh, can I use a Raspberry Pi Zero W2 with 64-bit for delivery-based operation car? Um, so, you can use 64-bit OS on a Raspberry Pi Zero, a Raspberry Pi Zero 2, that is. The problem with Raspberry Pi Zeros is they they only have half a gig of RAM, and you'll run out of that pretty quickly. Depends what you're doing with that delivery-based operation car. If you're if you're running something that's well within that space, then you'll you know it'll work fine. If you're running something that needs virtual memory or more mem more than half a gig of RAM then you'll need um, probably to look at a Raspberry Pi 4 or something like that instead. That'd be my guess. It depends on how much more memory is being used. So Neil says, uh, we use our uh, QA portainers against Raspberry Pi for Docker, Swarm, and uh, micro K. It's on Pi. Awesome. And there's so many things that are being used, um, are being deployed onto Raspberry Pis. So my brother works in pharmaceutical industry, and he says they have Raspberry Pis there for doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, I know Raspberry Pi themselves are looking at... Um, having more kind of success stories for businesses that Im embed these in their business in all different kinds of ways. Uh, and they certainly helped me um, with my with my business as well, running all the websites locally and very cheaply, you know. So if this is the, you know, a 15 watt power supply or something, that's like really low power compared to like a beast of a, a server that's like, you know, maybe 1500 watts or something that's constantly on. These things are really low power, both power power usage and uh, they can you can get a lot done with that little little processor that's on there oh roland forgot his uh two raspberry pi 400s as well i love the pi 400 it really is like that kind of 1980s computer feel i love it oh yes uh, as i said don't forget to click the like button thank you for that i get to see all the stats on there as well i can see we've got 31 people watching currently um and i, can, I think if i go over to the uh the youtube thing i can also see we have had uh 21 likes that's pretty cool awesome um so adam says my one and only pi 4 was built as a desktop computer but ended up being used as an mqtt node red so i use that as well i've got an mqtt server running on the i think it's probably on that raspberry pi 400 uh, again that's in a docker instance in a container um i have everything running in containers i use node red for a lot of home automation stuff for the chair light stuff so you can see a little chair light there that's probably running through the mqtt broker as well as we speak so if you do a hashtag chair lights and then a color you probably see that change as well try doing hashtag uh, chair lights and then red let's see if that'll, uh, that'll change it, i think every 15 seconds it's polling something like that so you'll see that um so yeah we're seeing wow um so <laughs> Evan, uh, Evan can't can't be so busy. He isn't even able to watch the streams. What's that? Evan, who's Evan? Oh, <laughs> yes, it is. It's a bit of a bodge, that isn't it? Oh, we've got another super chat coming in there from Dean. Thank you so much, Dean. That should pop up in a second, just over here, waiting for that to appear. It, it takes a couple of seconds for um, the bot to pick it up, but I've just seen it on the chat live now, so that'll come through. So Dean says, I thought my crazy collection of 17 pies was a lot, <laughs> but you easily beat that. <laughs> there we go. There's the super chat. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that, Dean. Really appreciate that. 
So yeah, I got an insane number, and it's not about it's not about like having the the most number of them. It's like I build something, and then I don't want to take it out of that thing. I want that thing to carry on working, so I get another one. And before there was the supply shortage, I bought a whole load of Raspberry Pi Zeros because for the price of them, you can you can get a Raspberry Pi Zero for like five pounds, five dollars. That's nuts. That's that's a price of a coffee. So I was like every day buy one, buy one, buy one. <laughs> the thing that costs more is the memory cards to put in them. They, they're like still about £30 or something like that, $30. So yeah, that was the thing that would be the killer. And then buying the power supplies for them. So I've got a whole drawer full of power supplies. I could show you them. There's like an embarrassment of them. If I get my little phone camera working, I'll, I'll show you them. So I'll take it to the drawer of Pi. I just need to let it go off like that and then do that. And it should, if I get that to... Uh, there we go, kids phone, so I press that, so there we go. So this is my little Stream Deck, I use a Stream Deck for, uh, <laughs> I need to remind you about the beta as well. Right, so if I come over here and I show you. Inception, look at that. Okay, let me just turn that off. Boom. I was looking for this, so I'm glad we just found that. So this is a Raspberry Pi build hat for Lego, for the Lego Education Spike or the uh, Mindstorm stuff. Lego have stopped doing that now, haven't they? They've stopped the whole line, so you can still buy them like back stock, I guess, but um, you can't actually... They're not going to make them anymore. So it's an opportunity for us. We can do cool stuff with Picos and Raspberry Pi Zeros and full raspberry pies and whatnot um so robert says if you get time at the end would you let us know what the matrix displays are in the background and where to get them from i shall tell you about these right now so you, you need to get yourself one of these for christmas i think at the moment they're uh, they're making more of them but they take quite a while to do so these are from uh, pimeroni in the uh, in sheffield in the uk they'll probably be sold via um adafruit i guess um, everywhere else so these are called galactic unicorns and they are an absolutely massive display to count the unicorns <laughs> so there's 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 one over there there's one there there's one there and then there's one here so yeah these are absolutely amazing i'll show you it a, a bit closer up on here so that's the back of it so you've got like the uh try and get this right so you've got the speaker there um, you've got a little battery pack, so you can actually run them on batteries for a ridiculous a long time. You've got two Quest connectors, the Stemma QT uh, and Quick connectors. And you've got the Raspberry Pi um, Pico uh, W, no, it's a Pico Zero, Pico W there for wireless connectivity. And you've got a couple of like user buttons, A, B, C, D. And I think there's also a reset button on there as well, somewhere too. Uh, and on the other side, yeah, you've got power, uh, sorry, you've got volume up and down. Uh, what else have we got on there? We have a lux and a sleep button. So there's like a little sleep button there. And then lux is like the brightness. So that'll make the, the bright. These are ridiculously bright as well. I mean, you can probably see from the, the brightness of the display there. I think this one needs the firmware updating on it because you can see it's sort of flickering a little bit. That's probably like an early release because I haven't updated that one since. And this, the, and then those three are prototype ones as well, I, I believe. Whereas this is like the uh, the main released one. And you get like a little cable with it as well. And you also get some little feet. So there's like little feet that sort of screw on here and just like allow you to sort of sit it back. But you can, you can even use it as a lanyard. <laughs> there's actually like a lanyard hole just there. <laughs> So when we did the, the video, we were premiering these on, uh, was it 30th of June, when the Raspberry Pi Pico W was being launched. Uh, we had these and we sort of had this as like a lanyard, which is just crazy. So yeah, you can do that. <laughs> so that helps, Robert. So Wayne says, I hope the Pi 5s will have a USB-C for power, HDMI, USB 2.3. We shall have to wait and see what happens with the Pi 5, won't we? Let's see what uh, what goodies that has when that eventually comes out. Uh, so Richard says, um, oh yes, the Galactic Unicorn, it absolutely is. So if you're hoping the Pi 5 
if you're hoping for the Pi 5 because the Pi 4 availability, think again, the Pi 5 will be even harder to get. How do you know this though, Adam? Have you been to their headquarters and spoke to the staff and not seen things on the walls and whatnot? No. Um, we'll have to wait and see when that comes out. I don't know when that is, honestly. I know that they are probably working on all kinds of next generation stuff there, but um, they're not a company that's sort of sleeping at the wheel. I know there's a lot of um, a lot of opinion about the availability of Raspberry Pi 4s. It's not for the lack of them making them. They are, make, they are making them like at max capacity in, in all their plants. The demand for them is just so high. It's gone from being like that to going practically vertical the demand it's insane so it's not that they're not making enough they just can't make enough because the demand is so high that's that's the issue and then you've got the scalpers who are able to get hold of quite a lot of the stock that was in the channel and then create like a, a hole in that um, supply chain because they've got them all there and they're trying to sell them for really high prices and if they're not getting the, the prices they need they're just sat there and they're sat on them so blame the scalpers i would say so Dan says, this is how much stuff, um, how much, how most Pi stuff goes me, jumping between errors on the command line. <laughs> this is probably me just being impatient. The thing I've not done yet, if you probably noticed, is I haven't updated the Pi. So what I really should do, you can see there it's got um, show updates. So let's uh, install the updates on there and let that do what it needs to do. That may well fix it because I haven't done that. Um, I don't know how old that uh, memory card image is. Um, one, one of the ways you can usually tell by how old, so it's quite a new release of the OS because I can see this little, I'm talking that and you can't even see it, yeah, the, um, the, this explorer thing, this, uh, is it called PC file mon or something, file man, it's a file manager, this is something that Raspberry Pi themselves uh, have, if they've not made it they've heavily tweaked it. And they've got this little section up here that isn't on the older version. So that's one. And I think there's only two icons there instead of the four. That's one of the way I know that this is like a reasonably new version just by look. Uh, and I hadn't gone up here and updated the updates. So I'm just running that now. Once they're updated, I can try again and see if it works. But I think it will probably be fine, actually. Let's have a see what else we got. So Dale says, late here. Um, I'm late here, but um, computer problems. Hopefully you get those fixed, uh, Dale. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, Dale on the show as well. So Roland says, in Germany, the Pi 4 is not available at the moment. No, pretty much the same as everywhere. But if you go to the store in, in Cambridge, they do have them. You can go in there and you can buy one. I think it is limited to one per customer. Uh, even if you think you're a superstar and you're like, can I have one? <laughs> you can buy one, but just one per customer. Seriously, though, if you're in the UK and you get to check out uh, Cambridge, I mean, it's a nice enough uh, city as it is, but if you could check out the Raspberry Pi store there, oh, so nice. Such a good time there. So, yeah, Adam, you, you're already saying the things that I'm, I'm, I know I should be doing. Have I updated it? No, I did not update it. That's probably the answer. Um, so Dale says, I do not care. The Raspberry Pi fan notion says uh, they need to allocate some more units to the regular distribution channels. They are just trying to max them out. They, they've got all their fab plants making as many as they can. And there is a supply um, shortage of things like the chips that they use. The fabricators are trying to make as many things as they can. There's only, I think, so one of the supply chain issues I understood was the um, substrate. So on a silicon chip, you have like the copper pins that you connect to on the motherboard on, on the on the bottom of the chip like the little round bubble things and then inside the silica um, that connects to the, the copper pins through this substrate it's like a, a material and it has to be done at like micron level so there is only a couple of factories in the world I think maybe both of them are in Taiwan and they had one of them had a fire and there is just the demand on them to to fabricate things to make this substrate stuff uh, is insane and it's one of those businesses that doesn't generate a lot of profit because it squeezed so much so it and it costs billions to set up one of these factories as well so you can imagine it's not a profitable thing to do there's a there's a bottleneck there the supply for chips in general if you think about a, a, a car an automotive car batteries battery technology has to have you know chips on them to control the the charging and all that stuff all these things require substrate there's a there's a real bottleneck there so i know that's one of the issues and it isn't down to raspberry pi not trying to make them they have teams of people out there um, making stuff they just get they just get taken up um so what else we've gone here 
Yep, not available in the UK unless you go to the Raspberry Pi store, in which case you just walk out with one confidently. You can even get a nice tote bag as well. They've got these nice bags. I think it's just on the side of the room though. Um, Dale says, I have to forcibly reboot my Pi 400 at least six times today. Oh no. Uh, I've got three robots that require Pi 4, 4 boards, but I'm going to have to convert them to not need a Pi 4 at all. So this is one of the things that happened with the Pico. Because these chips are absolutely minute and they made billions of them, there's a big supply of them. So that's why you can get hold of the Picos, the Pico Ws, and all the products that have things like Pico Ws in them, like this uh, nice little Raspberry Pi Pico W Plasma Stick 2040W. Um, and there's lots of other products that have them kind of built on as well. You can get hold of the stuff that can do that. So if you've got a project that doesn't actually need to have a full Raspberry Pi 4, use that instead. So for example, I've got the, uh, the Servo 2040 here, which is from uh, Pimroni. That has the Raspberry Pi uh, Pico, or API 2040, I really should say, embedded in it. And you've got all those sort of 18 Servo connectors and so on, USB-C connector, reset button, and so on. So there's so much innovation going on there. Do you really need a full-size Raspberry Pi 4? Unless you're doing something like AI, uh, face or voice recognition, you probably could get away with something a little bit smaller than that. Laurie says the 4Bs are harder to come by in the US. Adafruit gets um, some almost every week. Micro Center has some, but occasionally you have to go be in a person in-person purchase. Yep, if I wasn't retired, I'd be able to get. Um, I wouldn't be able to get any Pi 4s. That's very true. Um, so yeah. Really bad situation, but it is changing. So I'm hearing there's, what do they describe it as? Green roots. There is definitely a change. So I've heard um, talk that by the middle of next year, it'll be pretty much back to normal. And you'll be able to buy all the Raspberry Pis that you would want to buy. So that's not too long away. That's, you know, six months and before that point, things will ease. So there's been a couple of weeks now where there's been some Raspberry Pi Zeros available um, on like Pimroni, for example, Pi Hut in the UK. They've had some for a number of days and they haven't been scalped. So that's a really good sign. So Adam says, of course, all of his robots run on uh, ESP32s. Cool, cool. Um, and uh, Dale says, uh, mine will all run on the STM32F. So I also understand there's a shortage of uh, STMs out there as well. Uh, so it's not just hitting a Raspberry Pi, and it's not their fault that this is happening, but they're just having to deal with it. Um, so, and Laurie says, uh, Pico Ws are limited in the US. Finally ordered some from Pimroni. Yeah, they ship worldwide. You might pay a little bit more for shipping, but um, yep, they do sell them. And um, yeah, Adam's been playing with the ESP32 C3 today. Have, excuse me, mainstream Python running, right? Awesome. And uh, Dale says he's got the STM32 H747 Discovery Kit with another H7 is on its way. Cool. So you just need to know how to make JST cables. So what you need is a good pair of crimping tools. I've got... Um, let me just wrap all of my tools here. I wasn't dropping something, it, it fell off. So these are my favourite new tools at the moment. Um, I've got these really nice crimping tools. I've got two of them. Show you what these are. These, the name is on there, isn't it? So I don't know if we can see that on there. So it's an SN28B, and these ones are amazing. So they're really, really good quality. I've got a, a smaller set as well. These are the Engineer preci pre pre Precision Precision ones. Uh, connector crimping pliers, and it's it's to do with these. You can buy the JST connectors. I've got a whole box load of them. So you get the little plastic thing, you also get a little metal strip. But this is the thing that makes the difference. I bought really cheap crimping tools, and I can tell you it makes all the difference if you've got a quality set. So these were probably about £15 each. They weren't cheap um, compared to like the £2 I paid for the, the cheap ones. But these actually work. And the other thing I've got, which is really, really my favourite thing, is this wire stripper. So this is also a, this is a PA06, made in Japan, this one. And it has that little uh, adjuster thing there, so you can put... Just move that cable thing off there. You put your cable in, and it sort of pushes against that metal plate, so you always get the right, correct length, and then you just strim, away you go. Absolutely love these. These are an essential part of the kit. And I couldn't get the JST connectors or the DuPont connectors to crimp properly until I bought them, and now it works every time. So, there you go. 
So Neil says, if you tried to deploy um, the stack from Portana stacks menu and uh, link the stack into your Git repo. I tried it once. Um, I did it manually. I cut and paste the code into Portana. Let's have a play with that. Uh, in fact, it's just uh, asking to reboot now, actually. So I'll just let it do that reboot and then we shall have a play with that. But yes, you can do all the kind of stack stuff, can you, within Portana, which is pretty neat. We can give that a go and see if that works. It might be as well that the uh, now that this is working, it works fine. Uh, I've not upgraded to the business license yet. So you can get that uh, five free devices, I believe, with the, uh, the business license. I've not tried that yet. So I might give that one a go just so we get some nice extra features. I did try the, um, um, the Docker Swarm. I believe Docker Swarm is still supported and is still going to be supported. It isn't, hasn't been sunset yet. Um, the issue I think I had with it is I have, um, I've got three little network hubs. They're not very good quality. There's one under each of the clusters and then the Raspberry Pi 400, which is next to me, is on like a different switch. So there's like a bit of lag a bit of delay and I think it was interfering with the heartbeat so every now and again the stacks would basically all the containers would just end up on one of the nodes um, and, and that wasn't really good enough because it didn't have a lot of memory in it so um, that wasn't great right so let's go over to let's see if we can get the uh, the compose thing working first so docker compose oops is that gonna work properly now so that looked fine last time, didn't it? But it's when we went into the, uh, the clustered pie, the stacks. And then let's go for that beta one there. And then let's do Docker compose up. Up will build it as well, I think. Still complaining about that. So let's try the, the stack thing in here. So if we go for 192.168.1.201. 9443 uh, with a HTTP as well. I think. Uh, let me just check Docker PS. Is Portainer running? So it's not. So let's just do um, Docker start Portainer. Okay, let's just run that again. Okay, let's connect to it. I've got to wrap up in a minute. My ice cream is on its way. <laughs> I've ordered a dessert from a local dessert store. Let's just see um, if this is all cool. Let me just give that a refresh. I've literally just started up the the instance, so maybe it's just a just taking a second. There we go. So. Um, so I always forget, is it the username of the person logged in? Or is it pi? Or is it admin? Or is it root? I can never remember the, the name I'm logging in with. Let's try Kev. Let's try a different password. Probably gonna lock myself out of here, am I? I don't know what the password is. That's really annoying. Um, right, well, what I can show you, <laughs> I can show you work, working on another machine that works fine. I'd probably just need to spend a bit of time just getting this kind of patched and up to the correct version of everything. So if I go into, um, let me see the Raspberry Pi 4. And let's go for that, I think. There we go. So on here, we have a number of things running. So let's just start up. Um, I not actually got Portino installed on that one. What? I'm sure I have. Um, okay, let's go into clustered pie. Let's go into 
Um, let's go into stacks. Let's go into beta. Let's go into beta. That wrong command there. And in here we have that Docker compose file. So if I if I this is what's supposed to happen, you do Docker compose, and then you basically just say bring it up. And if it's not built, it will bring it. It will build the file, create the uh, the um, image, the container, and then run the container. And then the dash d just means just do it disconnected. So just tell me that it's done. Now this is already running on here. It's already up to date. So if I go over to, this is the thing I wanted to tell you, this is what all the post-it notes were about. So if I go to beta.kevsrobots.com slash beta, actually just beta.kevsrobots.com, this is running on that, that particular Raspberry Pi that we're connected to. And the beta version has this new um, learn navigation link. And in here, let me just click accept on there. And in here, if I just click on that again, and I go to the MicroPython. There's a whole new course that's available to you for free. You can learn how to to program in MicroPython, uh, and this entire course is built using Jekyll and Markdown and um, my own Python script that builds the YAML file for all the navigation and does all these fancy links. So the very first video that we filmed last Sunday, that's available on here, so you can watch that. But you can also learn about things like how to, you know. Which uh, Python environments do you want to use? I did have Atom on there, but apparently that's been sunset now. And uh, Matt um, from the MicroPython team has actually vetted some of this as well. So he's uh, he's been helping me make sure that this is the best it can be. So we've got some code examples there. We've got how to install Thony, uh, all that kind of good stuff. So this entire website um, is running. It's, it's, it downloads the code directly from GitHub in the in the container file as it's building it. Um, it grabs like the latest version of all the. So if I scroll up here and I go to. Let's just go to the home. There's a couple of things that um, appear on this home. So this very first thing here, recent videos. So you can see there the learn MicroPython from scratch, the uh, the Christmas bobble ones and so on. So it gets all the latest videos in a YAML file. And that's what that Python script is that I created. And you've also got things like tweets on there as well. And then each of the videos are, these are blog entries actually. So if I click on that, this is like a write-up that I've done for a particular project. And what I love about this is you can create things like table of contents and all things like that automatically just based on the, um, the heading styles that you apply to it in uh, Markdown. So really, really easy to um, to knock together blog entries or build entire courses and things like that. Um, you just have to put the effort into writing the correct content. So that entire website is being hosted on a Raspberry Pi uh, cluster and they're managed by Portainer, like I said. So if we can go to, let's go to the, um, the main computer, which is this one, 9443. Um, if this doesn't let me connect, I can go over to a different browser that's got the password cached <laughs> because I always forget the password, as you've just seen. I think it's the username that's confusing me. I'm going to scroll down in a second just in case, Neil, you've typed something else there. Uh, I have followed the um, how to change your password thing as well because I've had to do that move more than once. Um, so I'm just going to scroll down and see what else people have talked about. So Dale was saying about the... Um, uh, robots is easy making <laughs> working GST cables and DuPont cables without losing your 10 bit is very hard. I hear what you're saying, very, very true. So, Wayne says, Is this your job or your hobby? Completely my hobby. <laughs> so, I do all this in my spare time, uh, believe it or not. So, I had a comment today from somebody saying that um, they were really disappointed that one of the videos I did, I think it was on um, the little googly eye things or a little. A Raspberry Pi Pico with a display pack on it and it has some eyes that sort of animate and they're really disappointed that I hadn't written up the project and done a wiring diagram um, so I'm going to do that because they've asked for that but I was thinking yeah but what about all the other effort that I put into that video like there's probably hundreds of hours that go into these videos so uh, yeah there's that okay what else we got on here um, how you made sure the audio streaming is switched on on your iPhone you can't so it's purely just um, a camera it's a feature of Ventura you know, there's a little connector you can get that sits on your laptop and you can basically just use the really high quality cameras on the back of your phone instead of your web camera that's kind of what that's for 
I'm just scrolling through <laughs> all the tangled cables. I have a really messy office, I'm sorry. It, it is what it is. So Adam says, I've got the proper tools for DuPont and I hate them. I still don't have um, many of the tiny ones yet. How many days since Kevin dropped something? <laughs> Zero. We need a, we need a, we need this thing with that on there. Days since I dropped something. <laughs> there you go, Kevin's dropped something. Um, so um, Dale says, I recently got a kit that's supposed to work for DuPont, Canables and JST. It has both type of connectors and pins. That's pretty cool. And um, uh, Dale says, I got the UM Tiny S3 board from Pimroni. I've got the Pro 3, Pro S3 and the Feather S3 boards directly from UM. Cool. So P Compulsive Child is on as well. He says, uh, hello from Oklahoma. Hey, how are you doing? And uh, yeah, Oklahoma. And Laurie says, I managed to make some JST connectors um, for my 3D printer fans um, to make them replace the make the replacement easier uh, in the future. I saw that post. I was looking at your little picture. I was looking at all the different... Because uh, I've got the exact same printer you've got, Laurie. So I was looking at that too. One of my printers is currently out of action. It's because I need to just adjust the tightness of the... Um, do you know this thing that you have? That, um, I don't know if you can see that. I probably got it the wrong way around. It's the thing that uh, goes onto your... Yeah. The, the filament goes through it it's that orientation isn't it the filament goes through into it and comes out that way and you've got this like little tension in spring and the springs are always like way too tight so you get this sort of like zip tie effect on the filament and it ends up just like clogging and then not working um so yeah so <laughs> makes this an official stream he's dropped something it's now official <laughs> I'm just scrolling quickly now because my ice cream is now melting um so do you count picos absolutely picos count they're, they're raspberry pies as well um, so Laurie says, uh, buy a kit with 50 to 100 in it. Y you absolutely can. So I've, I've definitely bought the, um, there's, there's the empty remnants of several Picos where you can literally buy them off the, off the reel. So where is Aaron? Where, why isn't he here? Are you looking there, Mr. Upton? You mean, um, Eben. It's not Evan, it's Eben. E-B-E-N. It looks like Eben, but I think it's pronounced Eben. Uh, so... Fred's, um, we are not counting picos at this time. We are, we absolutely are. <laughs> Snail says, I'm going to have to buy a lot more JST connectors because um, I don't have enough of them in this kit. I tend to buy, if, I, if I'm going to buy anything, I buy more than one of them because why buy one when you can buy 10 of them <laughs> if they're cheap? Um, yeah, that's my rule always because you never know if, you, if you're going to need to use them again. So Dale says, I've got five, um, four, four gig boards, but they're not working right now for some reason. It's probably the memory card. The number of memory cards I've got that have died. I need a little grave. I need a graveyard for memory cards. I need to put that as an idea. <laughs> because there's so many of them um, die. <laughs> so Dale's got a regular Pi Zero. So Compulsive Charles says, I came across this channel yesterday and I enjoy what you're doing. Hope you learn. Um, I'm hoping to learn about coding so one day I can build my own giant robot and terrorize my hometown. That sounds like an awesome goal. Go for it. <laughs> So I've got a giant robot um, just off camera over there. It's like the torso. I think the head is up there somewhere. Yeah, it used to be on the desk over there, but there's like two giant InMove robots. InMove.fr if you're interested in that. So they go online while I'm not at work and go and buy that to get home. Uh, Tic Tac from hey, Hi from Germany. How are you doing? Uh, Peter says, is there a danger you're going, to, you're doing something useful with them or are you going to just gloat over them? <laughs> so honestly, they all have to earn their keep if they're switched on and drawing power. They've got to do something uh, at least useful. Um, so I've got quite a few of them that like monitor things or, you know, run little scripts here and there. Some, and they tend to be exclusively running Docker with things in containers because I just find this so easy to just have it as code and you can deploy it as code um, it's just the best way of doing things so I'm going to do another tutorial on how to make a Python program run in a docker instance because it's like about three steps to do it it's so awesome uh, so Dale says he's got a total of 13 pies wow that doesn't even uh, include the picos <clears throat> got lots of rp2040 boards as well awesome so Adam's got a mastodon account at mastodon um, app.uk awesome <laughs> So Dale says, Pimmer only loves me, my hot wallet hates them though. Oh, they, they make so much awesome stuff. So um, your Pi 400 boots a 512 flash drive and has um, has another 500 USB SSD connected to it. That's pretty cool. 
So Dale says, I want to know how to set up a private Mastodon server. Another reason I need a Pi 400. So if you go to Raspberry Pi's uh, news site, they've got an article on exactly how to do that. Um, I want to do that, but do it in a Docker instance, as I've said, and then I can scale out as if I need to. I can play and learn how to do that. So Robert says, um, um, I'm, I run my, my pond with a, th a Pi 3 autofill temperature monitors and um, uh, has the summer control kits in it as well. So I've got a box of stuff just here uh, waiting for spring. And this has got all kinds of like uh, plant sensors in it and stuff like that. Uh, this is, it's got a mixture of the grow hat sensor. Um, so it's got things like these, uh, it's another pin product, grow moisture sensors. And I've even got the little pump things as well. So you can pump water, try and grab hold of one. You basically just sit these little pumps in water and they shoot water out there when the board tells them to and then i've got a little grow thing as well so there's a another little pin product which is the the grow enviro grow it's got a raspberry pi pico on the back and uh, it has all the little connectors on there as well so you can connect the sensors as well as the water pumps so i've never used the water pumps that's going to be one of my fun projects for, for spring so that's uh that's just living over there at the moment just off camera uh so wayne says uh going to automate my blinds with picos awesome i think robert toby roberts has done that as well you have to check out his uh, youtube channel i think he put a video on how he did that and matt says i've got around 50 picos and i'm donating to our local creative lab at our local library that's amazing matt that's an amazing idea honestly there's nothing better than as well as making your own stuff helping other people make theirs there's like an, an extra level of magic in that so um that's a that's an amazing thing to do um so adam says uh, i need a private server for a project a few of us are working on ah cool cool and uh, rumor has it that on christmas day there's a TikTok of kev dancing i'm sure that'll happen <laughs> oh and there's that uh, super chat from matt thank you for that uh and uh uh Shemi says, uh, yeah, you got it right for the first time. It's because I've <laughs> literally wrote it on this post-it note here. Like, I have to say it, Shemi, because you've just told me how to say it. So I'm going to make sure I get that right. Um, so, because you've been a really uh, good supporter there. So I have to make sure I get those right. So many of the non-USA-based vendors um, will not ship or sell to the USA. Um, but I know, that, so Pimroni do. And, and also, they, they're kind of partnered with uh, Adafruit. They sell each other's products. So... Um, PIM mostly sell uh, Raspberry Pis before the shortage issue and they have, they have like about 500 of their own products as well I guess but um, yeah there's that posted to the UA and USA and Canada is high and troublesome so yeah I get that and um, yeah well, he had uh, there was that super chat as well from Dean and um, what else have we got on here so Dale says, I need to figure out that why the Pi 4 boards will not boot from USB now. Not sure. Ah, so Neil says, see your Twitter DMs, Kev. I will check that out. I will get to the bottom of uh, what's going on there. Um, but yes. I, I, I see you've said quite a few things. I'm going to read that in a second. So thank you very much for that, uh, for Neil. Really appreciate it. Um, so Adam says, uh, Robotics, check your settings. Has USB boot been disabled? Uh, or if you forgot to enable the USB boot firmware. Yeah, there's, there is a firmware thing you need to apply, I guess. Um, sometimes settings can get overwritten by newer versions of Raspberry Pi when it updates. Possibly something like that. Could be an issue with the drive itself. They're not. It's not unknown that they fail. Uh, I'd, I'd connect that up to like another computer if you've got one. I'd, you know, if it's not the same Raspberry Pi 400, have you got a different Pi 400 or a 0 or a Pi 4 you can connect to or an old laptop just to see. Um, so yeah, powered up, aka power functions too. Um, so, scene. Not sure what you mean by that. So Adams, uh, I do not know because they will not boot. I need to see if they'll boot from an SD card. Yeah. Cool, cool. So, that'd be cool. Are you going to make any videos? Yeah, I, I'm always for people making videos. We want to see uh, what's going on with stuff. Uh, Adam says there's a bottleneck with programming a Batmobile kit due to the parts. <laughs> cool, cool. So yeah, we, we need to see what you're doing with that, Wayne. Can't wait. So it could be uh, the drives have died. Yeah, it could be. So Dale says I've got an NVIDIA Jetson Xavier. Um, that's named Skynet. I've got the uh, the Jetson Nano, uh, the 2 gig version, I think it is. It's awesome for doing uh, machine learning on. 
Um, Adam says, I need the Compute 4 for dual cameras. It's pretty cool. I've got issues with my Compute 4, but yeah, we will get that working. And uh, I'm trying to blast through the comments here. Have you looked at the Arduino uh, Ardu Cam cameras? They have a hat for hooking up four cameras. So I've got the, um, the Ard, uh, Ardu Cam time of flight camera in one of those uh, Pi cameras on there. I've not got that to work yet. So that's another thing I uh, will do a show on once I've figured that out. Um, and uh, Adam says, I need glasses now to read the Raspberry Pi magazine. I hate getting old. I have to wear glasses too. I've got my, uh, my specs in here. I bought some um, just for looking at like component things. I've not cleaned these for a while, but these are my like glasses. They've got like these really thin lenses. So if I'm like looking at a component, I only need them for like looking at stuff like really close up. So is that short sighted? So I can like read the, uh, you know, the, the version number off the chip and all that kind of stuff. But without them, it's just like a little bit blurred or I just can't see it at all. So I've got these, but yeah, they've got these weird uh, bendy things. So it's one of them things you get to like a certain age and then your eyesight deteriorate slightly it's just one of those things i got to 47 without needing glasses so i thought that was pretty cool <laughs> completely arbitrarily it's nothing to do with anything i can control it's just the it is what it is so adam says i've got the sn28b tool for duponts that's pretty cool and wayne says uh, i want to see him for um and a wave share board to rebuild my uh, uh ha the wave share board has power over ethernet and you uh, and a ups and an M2 with a wall mount. That sounds awesome. And uh, Rich says, uh, Canada costs are nuts. I think everywhere is kind of nuts at the moment. I think generally things are just costing more. Uh, so Richard says, I'm not um, shipping. There's a cost of the packaging and the cost of somebody to do that and to do the paperwork. Yeah, you, <laughs> the whole Brexit thing in the UK as well really adds to costs and complications. Um, so Dale says my eight port switch has po power, uh, power over Ethernet on all the ports. I did buy a power over Ethernet thing. Um, it was down there somewhere. Um, but I've, I've just not got around to doing anything with that. It's like an, uh, an injector thing. Alice says I've been w um, wanting to make a helmet with dual cameras with dual screens and I just want to build the electronics microscope with dual cameras and dual screens. That'd be pretty cool. Um, what kind of cat cable do you need for power over, the, over Ethernet? I think... Pa oh. I think you can use it on any of them, really. Cat 5e upwards, I think. Because it's just one of the pairs, isn't it? There's like eight pairs of wires, and it's just one of them is for power, I guess. Cat 6e is the, the current standard, isn't it? I'm sure there's Cat 7, but I've not come across that in the work I do. Uh, will Cat 5 work, or do we need Cat 6? I think Cat 5 works as well. Pretty sure. Because the difference between Cat 5 and Cat 6 is the, the shielding and the cable inside. There's like a little plastic... Um, like plus shape all the way through that sort of twists around and um, each of the pairs of wires sits within one of the, the quadrants of that so that's kind of what one of the, the things the shield in that uh, protects it and then your bend radiuses and all that kind of stuff it's been a long time since I did any cabling but um, I did used to do that back in the day but yeah so yes yeah, so I think the main difference between cat 5 and cat 6 is probably just the distance like the frequency that you can run that at and therefore the length you can get it from A to B. Um, so the board for the project ticker arrived this week, so I can't um, so I can complete my Hello World guide. Awesome. Um, Still says so. It's you took all the galactic unicorns. It's probably a good thing. <laughs> They're making more. I think they just take. There's a video on Pim's uh, on social media of the machine that puts the pick and place that puts all these in place. It's absolutely insane. So uh, yeah, you want to check that out. Um, so Dale says, uh, Pi Foundation needs to allocate some Pi boards uh, to the top regular. So yeah, the Raspberry Pi trading are, are allocating as many as they can everywhere. I do understand for Christmas they have allocated a special amount for Christmas uh, purchases. So um, keep your eyes peeled for that. I think they'll probably be in like December, probably be any time now actually, I'll guess they'll be landing. Um, so Laurie says, not yet, I've tried to get rid of my Twitter account recently, so I need to move, move on to somewhere. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so Adam says, I know it's Eben. Eben. It's Eben. Not Eben, it's pronounced. <laughs> also correct, keeps doing it. Uh, so, um, Adam says, you can find me on a Mastodon UK server. I'm on Mastodon.social at the moment, but I'm going to move to my own instance once I've got that up and running. So, Wayne says, so Adam Savage said in one of his videos, he goes shopping in the UK, so he stocks up. That's what I've started doing, printing all my um, lots of Gridfinity to store it all up awesome 
I'd love to meet Adam Savage one day. That's on my definite to-do list. And a few of my maker friends have. Um, so like Odd J, he uh, has met Adam Savage. He's done that uh, show about all like the different things he built on there. That must have been an amazing day out. And then there's like Sophie Wong, who does all the space uh, and uh, wearable tech. She's uh, had another sort of show thing as well. So um, yeah, I, I want to be on that list. But I'm being based in the UK, I guess it's a bit trickier to do that. So Kirsty Robotica says, uh, hello, Kevin, question here. Is it possible to run um, the Pimroni Pew library on Raspberry Pi Pico with CircuitPython firmware? So I asked the question of that to Pimroni and they said it should. It's it's kind of pure MicroPython, so it should work on CircuitPython 2. There's nothing special that's being done in Pew in the background. A few, so I should say. So uh, the easiest way is to give it a try and see if it works, but it should work. There isn't anything fancy about it, really. So Robert says... Um, excuse me grow hat works really well i built a system to water my tomatoes in the greenhouse while i was away at work on halls work really well awesome and uh how to pronounce that is it joshin um, he says uh, how many pies have you bricked so far do you know i've been so lucky i've not bricked any of them one of those that i showed before on the um the raspberry pi cluster there one of them has a usb stick in the usb port because I did accidentally break off the uh, SD card, like the little metal thing that it connects into, it just kind of came away, and nothing I could do would make it stick on there. And luckily, you can boot from USB, so I was able to get rid of the SD card and just have it on the USB, and uh, that works fine. So Adam says, uh, what's your master done? I can't find you. So I think I am... Um, let me find out and I shall tell you because I've not got it on my social links, have I? So if I go to Mastodon, um, I am I'm at Kev's Mac on Mastodon. So if you go over to to there, that's me. That's my official at Kev's Mac. I've got the same picture, so you should be able to recognize me uh, and so on. So, yeah, I've not got a, a great deal of connections on there yet, but um, um, I will be building it up. Um, and I do post. I've not been cross posting, but I do post to Mastodon as well. So there you go. Well, I think we're going to have to wrap up now because uh, I've gone way over the half eight slot I was aiming for. I thought this about like a really easy, um, quick kind of show today because I've not really done any prep because I did all the prep for the, the Learn module too, which has just been released at six o'clock today. So, um, so at this point, I'll say thank you so, so much for joining me. Thank you for all the super chats as well today. That's mind blowing um, how many people have donated to that. Thank you so much for that. And I shall see you all next time. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.